Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the entry edition of the Novel Keys NK87. We'll talk about the pros and the cons of this board specifically, and then introduce other keyboards that are similar, but better for different reasons. Even though it can be a great starter keyboard, there are some small details that you might want to consider that make it less entry than the name suggests. This board has an F13 key and a non-standard bottom row, so all of the cheaper keycap sets will not work on this keyboard. The main features of this board are that it is hot swap RGB south facing and comes with dampening not just for the PCB but also the case. It is VIA compatible and Novel Keys also has some different plates that you can get like the copper one I got for my aluminum edition. It doesn't come with keycaps or switches, but given that it is south facing and has a seven unit spacebar, most of your keycap options are going to point you towards a GMK set. The coiled cable that comes with the board is a gimmick and I would prefer a regular USB-C cable. The build kit does come with a very nice carrying case and a wire based switch and keycap puller. Overall, if this board didn't come with a case, I wouldn't have bought it. So I chose to get some Kale Pro Purples from Micro Center and some knockoff GMK keycaps to save some money. On the Aluminum Edition, I did get the real GMK set, and the only way you can tell the difference is by the injection marks on the bottom of the keycaps. The one advantage this entry edition has over the aluminum edition is that the standoffs for the tray mount can be entirely removed so that there is a tiny bit more flexibility while typing. My biggest issues with the board are the layout and the quality of the plastic case. There were distinct gouges in the plastic where they separated it from the mold and if I'm paying $120, $130 for a board, there shouldn't be a chunk missing. Even the $55 board from Drop that is similar to this board didn't have problems like this. Also, the pre-lubed stabilizer job on this board is utterly embarrassing. If you mod anything on this board, it should be the stabilizers. In a little bit, you'll hear the difference. Now that I've spoken about this board, I'm going to talk about two other builds I have planned and why I feel they will be better. When I upload those videos, there will be links in the top right. The aluminum version of this board is better. The only drawback is that it has the same layout. It does have a completely different sound profile, but it is just as pleasing to the ears. The aluminum version has a fantastic coating, is sturdy, heavy, and has all the benefits of the entry edition like hot swap and south facing, but due to the materials, it is almost twice the price. Alternatively, the Fleesports MK870 is nearly identical visually to the entry edition, and even has dampening between the plate and the PCB. The plate is aluminum and it doesn't have case dampening, but it is half the price. After looking at the MK870, it doesn't appear to have any of the quality control issues that are so apparent on the entry edition. After modding, I was very happy with how it sounded and am glad to have this in my collection. When I built this board, I removed the standoffs, re-lubed the screw and stabilizers, lubed the switches, and assembled the board. Please help me to keep my channel alive by giving me some thanks, subscribing, or becoming a member. Roughly 20% of you are returning viewers but haven't subscribed yet, so please hit that bell notification to stay up to date with my channel. Take a listen to the before and after, and then I'll tell you my final thoughts on why I'm not keeping this board out on my desk. It now has a soft and poppy sound, doesn't rattle, and feels really smooth.
Ultimately, my biggest problem with this board is the fact that I can only use custom keycaps on it. Sure, the gouges in the plastic were annoying and it wasn't as sturdy as I hoped, but I have something like 8 key sets that I am not able to use with this board. Don't get me wrong, this board sounds and feels great, but ultimately I'm a fan of standardization and there is no reason and no benefit to this layout over a standard TKL layout. Other layouts like the 65% require a custom bottom row and can be looked past for the form factor requirements, but forcing this layout when you don't need to is an annoyance for something labeled entry edition. Maybe I'm being a little harsh, but if you have a ton of custom sets, this board might be perfect for you. Please stay tuned for further keycap discussions in the video for the aluminum version of the board, and if you would like to save some more money, see my upcoming video on the Flea Sports MK870. Even though this is a great board, for now I'm going to put this away in its case and save it for a rainy day, and maybe I'll change my mind.